I'll begin recording. Now you'll have a pop-up box that says recording started. And I see that. Okay. So I am, uh, so we have to behave ourselves. Uh, yes. So the silliness we were doing earlier. All right. I um, hope it's going to drop at the half hour mark, but. Okay. Uh, All right. Sorry, I'm okay. So I problem. heard, so I see the proposed agenda is some sort of bug or defect response time. Yeah. And the trick was to separate the uh, wheat from the chaff, as it were. Right. Um, I mean, I don't have a crisis with saying, you know, this, you know, measuring this requires some cooperation from the project for identifying bugs. Mm -hmm. um, and we could just start with that and acknowledge that, you know, projects which don't identify which ones are bugs and which ones aren't. You know, now obviously, so some sort of confirmation. I was gonna say as well as at least in projects, there's always a rating as well, because then, well, right. at least in a product, whether or not it's a minor or severe, will depend on if there is an SLO ish or some kind of like. Well, at least in this case, we're basically encouraging some kind of assumed SLO or some kind of level of responsiveness that might necessarily be a hard coded fact it's just based on a median res like response rate so not actually an slo and medium response time which would have been an slo had you bought this from a vendor in which case there does need to be tiers of responsiveness where minor bugs versus critical things that are taking down the entire project have different levels of expectation okay right do uh do you want to try to capture that or just say for you know you know, get some insight into just bugs as a whole. The, the challenge, of course, is that different people rank. I mean, you, you, as soon as you switch into multiple rankings, it's hard to have any sign of consistency. Yes. I guess, I mean, but I think there's even the inconsistency problem of what is defined as a bug. So right. it's just like, is it a bug or not? And then essentially, we're still relying on project leaders and maintainers to provide some context of how they how they classify things as a bug or not. And some projects are explicit about doing that or not. Right. So like if they use the word bug or defect, like those are I'm just I'm adding to what David wrote. I'm like labels can be something of a guide but david's right if the project isn't following any kind of a system consistently then it won't matter that that those labels won't be complete enough and they pro um i oh sorry keep finish your thought no, and then i, I was my thought was my thought was like it. wandering through my head in a circle so well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go full circle here to like my first risk meeting. <laughs> um, Kate Stewart was working on a labeling question, mm -hmm. looking at the consistency of labels and terminology that were being used to classify things yep. where I'm not, I'm not quite sure where that ended. Cause I remember she did some work, she I shared mean, what she had done. And then I think the pandemic happened and Kate and I ended up doing a lot of different things. And I think, yeah. Kate's so on that, I was thinking like, why not? This is a good uh, place. We have been working on that uh, data for a quite long, like labeling them, classifying them. Why not to turn into a like research paper as a like we have the data. We have been working on it, framing a question and working as a paper output from a research working group, like risk working group. Yeah, well, because I think I think this is now providing us a hard use case of what we might do with that information. Looking at yes. a, thousands of labels on mass, you can say, how were people actually labeling things? Were we yeah. able to identify what definitively was a bug and wasn't a bug based on how they use labels? And it's not exactly answering the metrics question. It's just taking a real world example of whether or not you could apply a metric like this based on some level of consistency in the use of labels. But we could actually make that claim if we did the analysis on the labels. Yeah. And um, so like in the, if I can bring this, I did, I found that spreadsheet pretty fast. This is across a very large uh, collection of repositories. Um, but so there, so in that sense, it's, 
reasonably complete. And if we're looking for defect labels, I'll pick a color. Can you share that link in the? I, I put it in the mix. Yes. Uh, it's minutes? it's like above it's like right here label counts across I repos um, and so like for example bug and bug you know we could have it there's some pretty easy programming to Makes put everything sense. in upper yeah. or lower case but yeah. i didn't do that for this um so, so it looks like is, bug or kind bug yep so Maybe. this seems like those labels are very popularly used, but it's whether or not other things in here were also classified as bugs later. Yeah. So this and does this. Sorry. No, go ahead. Nope. I was going to say, this is just looking at labels. Do we have a view of multiple labels? Yes. Because it could be a bug plus like something else. Yes. So it could, because this is just, I'm assuming the raw instance count of bug, not what bug was appearing with that could provide more context on it but then correct then you're actually just looking at not the number of labels you're looking at the things that were being labeled and that yes. provides a different count point yes absolutely because we were just looking at classification we weren't looking at combinations of classification we have data for like every label applied mm -hmm. um and that that those labels are um those are what the labels are at the point of our data collection, but we also have event streams, so we can have the addition and removal of labels that we analyze. Um, so, after this, like instances of there are over 132 instances of bugs in this list. Uh, is there really? You did yeah. A quick, um, yeah. Wow. I I don't. I don't, I don't uh, doubt you. It's just a control F on this file. There are 132 BOG oh. findings. Wow. And Ooh, there's one called cat bug. Sorry. Cat bug? <laughs> Type oh, bug. Okay. Lizard brain. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot. Like you just keep going down. Doc bug. Wow. Sorry, now now we've now we've diverged a bit. But it's more to me what this is saying is that potentially labels are effectively being used as ways to identify whether or not something is a bug. There could be more specificity in how the label is implemented that could give you a sense of the severity of the bug or what the bug is actually like if it's a doc bug versus a like build like something wrong in the build like that's a lot more of an issue than if the documentation is incorrect. Like I mean that's a problem but it's not going to take your system down. So there are 132 labels of the bugs. Yep, mm -hmm. that's what Sophia said. Yep. I'm glad that our quick control F's agree or else we would have yeah. a problem. <laughs> T bug, type bug, type bug fix. I, I think cat bug is still my favorite. I don't want to yeah. more. Cat. Is it just the, the word cat bug? It's, it's cat slash bug. I guess that's probably for category, right? <laughs> but yeah, I like the I idea think, of it being just for cats. It's a it's a, that and my, bugs. Yeah. My cats love bugs. Like if there's a bug in the house, that is the most exciting thing in the world. Yeah. yeah. Now, now some of these things like two point four and T optimization, I would not immediately think of as related to bugs. So we're going to have to clearly a lot of these are just this is just a, yeah. a label count we're going to have to yeah so like we just searched on the word bug david yeah so so let's 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 make a list right here in our doc of common ways based on that this quick analysis can we do that real quick yeah 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 we're, we're looking at it, search for bug you know and here's what we found uh we're working on uh let's see here can I can I start going ham in the spreadsheet and make another sheet yeah, that I can really totally okay. yeah totally yeah totally go rogue do whatever makes sense watching me try to filter on Google spreadsheets is too yep. painful. This is only uh, on, on uh, used on GitHub, right? Not GitLab. GitLab uses labels as well. I know, but yeah. it, what is this spreadsheet for? This spreadsheet is just from uh, CNCF projects uh, that are all on GitHub. Um, do we have the, the methodology of the poll? Uh, 
demarcated anywhere? Because if we are going to refer to it, I want to make sure that we understand what it is. These are all, it, this, these labels are all the issue labels. Um, and these then, are issue labels on CNCF projects pulled at what date? Oh, well, so sometime in late 2019. Okay. Well, because I'm just like, I'm pointing that out because I think there have been over 100 projects added to the CNCF in the last year. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, I, and I can't say that it's all CNCF because it also included Kate's universe of Zephyr. And I don't know if Zephyr mm. is under CNCF. I don't know. It's not. So. So, I mean, this isn't the perfect sample, but it's better than it's, a zero it's, sample. And, you're right. And, and noticed uh, the following labels, right? Yeah. That, that's what I want to do. I, I know bugs there, so we don't have to go further. Type colon bug. Yeah. I guess that was capital T, right? Yeah. I was, I mean, we could list all 132, but that's probably oh, what so Sophia's you're, you're working just on. List the, list the big <laughs> ones. What, what are the common uh, ones? Yeah, yeah. Some, th there's different versions of the word type and uh, versions and abbreviations for the words type and category. Um, okay. I mean, are, if, if we just searched on bug, would that be enough? I'm a little afraid of that because so if, if bug was if some word included the word B-U-G within it, spug or something, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, just scanning it. Uh, I guess uh, one debugging. area area debugging probably fits that category. Area colon debugging. This one is great. A colon bug colon beetle colon. Like, okay. Yeah, uh, don't you know? Don't include. You're hilarious. Yeah, see that that's a, see okay, debugging is a great one. I don't think debugging is a bug. No, it's not. No. So and there's four occurrences of the word defect. Defect. So I see a bugzilla. Uh, is it a oh. bug or a bugzilla? Well, bugzilla is a tool. Yeah, Bugs is a, is a widely used tool for issue tracking. If yeah. you're not using Good. GitHub or GitLab's Git GitHub or GitLab's tracker or some other tracker that's built into your forge, uh, get Bugzilla is probably the most common of the uh, yeah. issue tracking separate. So Bugzilla is not. So I, I would say like debug and Bugzilla would probably be excluded. Yep. Because Bugzilla, I believe, is, I mean, it's language of what it's called. It, it of course, predates GitHub. The language of the platform has bug in it. But I don't think that they knew that everything that went in there was a bug when they made it. I think there was some... Um, no, yeah, it could just be used as issue tracking. Exactly. Yeah. So I think, for yeah. me, I see that label as there's probably a Bugzilla instance that this is referring to, and then that issue is being handled in both media, or medium, right. rather. And that's how right. I would interpret that label. Right, and a lot of projects that use Bugzilla, it's similar to GitHub, GitHub's issue tracker. They're not always bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Then that was my experience. I mean, I used Bugzilla before there was GitHub. And yeah, my experience is they were not always bugs. Yeah. As far as Same I know, as... Mozilla uses, uh, Mozilla continues to use Bugzilla, and I'm pretty sure they use it for everything. Again, yeah. similar to how Git, GitHub's issues work. Which makes sense. I mean, why use two different yeah. tools that do most of the same thing? All right. So, uh, bug, type bug, defect. Well, it's got here. I can't look at the screen and type in very That's well same. at the same time. And you I'm don't need to be looking at the screen if you're typing in it, because we're right now looking at the same thing. OK, well, how about this spreadsheet search here? OK. Um, other words that you want to search for? Well, that, that, that was my question. Are there other things that you found? Yeah, let me go back up to the high counts. Being down on the ones is probably not. I see kind slash bug. Yep. You said that verbally, but it's not yeah, there's a, here. There's a hundred and well, there's 132 in the spreadsheet. So we probably did not say defect. Yep. Somebody said defect. Yes. Yep, I added that already. Okay. Yep, that's in the notes. And I think just the inclusion of the word bug with the exclusion of the words debug and bugzilla. Those are the two anomalous ones that we found. Now, the, the weird thing is uh, bug fix is not by itself. No, because it could be a separate issue that's addressing an existing bug, right. so it would be right. double counting. So this is assuming that, so I guess, I guess for me, 
if we can get a better record of how the data was pulled or maybe repull it, yeah. we could, I could totally basically say it. out of out of X number of repositories, these many had implemented labels of which bug was so basically to to showcase if this is a repeatable way to measure it because enough projects are, have implemented some kind of labeling policy that would mark it. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. But I, I think that the challenge though is I guess, I mean, we're, we're facing this in some of our other projects of ingesting the, the API stream. It doesn't always pull in labels. <laughs> so depending on how you're pulling the data, you have to actively go see if they're like what's coming up and how it's labeled. Like you can see that the issues are being created, but if you apply a bug label to an issue, that isn't necessarily easy to pull. At least we're still trying to figure out how to pull that into the data and creating an organic schema from it. You could look at the GitHub worker in Augur because we have all the endpoints to pull all the issue related data in there. Okay, so you're in, in, if you can implement it in Augur. It is implemented. It is. I mean, that's where this data came from. Is Augur. I, I'm more familiar with Grimoire Labs now, so this is this is good that we have both views. <laughs> yeah. No, and um, I can actually just I, I'll, I'll add a link uh, for where I mean, like, so if you're trying to create it, or if Grimoire Labs trying to create it, then um, the endpoints exist. And okay. It's not. Then, it's. I don't think it's like deep knowledge, like of yeah. anything what's more that like i think questioning this the sort of this labeling exercise or labeling analysis will help us confirm whether or not whether or not enough or critical mass of projects are using this in a way where we can recommend that they build metrics around bug resolution times but if folks aren't actively labeling bugs as bugs then the metric isn't implementable is that a right. word I think yes, so, it yeah. is. <laughs> I Not use it. I, I use it many times, and if people use it, then it's a word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Augur does acquire this information. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and you know what? It's it's okay. I, I think it's okay if it's hard for some projects. The goal then I've just marked this is we probably should encourage standardized labels, maybe one of a set, to make it easier to measure this. Mm -hmm. Well, so yeah, that's that's also why I was interested in seeing the overlap of labels. So not all these are singular labels, because um, okay. I think it's also like I've seen most labels or things that I've seen labeled have been like, I don't know, anywhere between two to five. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think we've we've we have answered the question. Can you identify? And the answer is yes. Yes, with some difficulty. Some yes, sometimes with difficulty, but in many cases, yes not all bugs are the same and i just wrote some text so i want to push i totally agree but i think it's still useful on metrics without that so are we are we good with not trying to finally grain it and i'm going to make an argument if you don't if you don't uh, try to do that then it's a little less vulnerable to gaming you know is it really right. critical i don't care it's a bug no. fix it yeah critical might be there could be critical features like when like protocol versions change, it's critical that you update your software if it relies on that protocol. So well, that's, maybe, uh, but that's not yeah, a bug well, per se. Well, yeah. that's what's curious to see the, the overlapping labels. So yes. we know we know people are using bugs as a label. Do we mm -hmm. know if, if folks are using bug and some sort of severity indicator as a second label? Yes. Be critical high, or docs or high, low, medium priority, like bug, high, bug, medium, bug, low, or bug critical. Yeah, well, I can make it. I'll. I can just. I haven't got everything set up to pull data for this meeting. And Sophia, you have to go. But for next time, I can put down an item where I just have an update of that spreadsheet that kind of shows the occurrence matrix for issues and pull requests that use certain labels, so you can actually dig a little deeper. Um, and I guess I we're not going to meet in two weeks because that would be Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Bring some turkey. Um <laughs> um, I guess, yeah. I know, I was also kind of thinking about, David, you were mentioning as, as part of this, we're basically also starting to encourage or recommend behavior. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of curious, I don't know, I think that's going a bit beyond sort of the, the chaos prerogative, but if there are, are metrics are getting specific enough where there 
implementable if people are following best practices. And I think labeling your issues as bugs is probably assumed as a good practice, but is it something that's actively said, this is how you should do it to be more consistent across projects for folks that are looking at it like this? Like I don't, I haven't really seen anything like that which potentially could encourage a statement of that somewhere there, there's probably someone who has written a blog post that says you should do x but that does not mean oh yes we all agree and there's the official lore um so i, I i'm okay with this group saying here's what we want to measure it sure would be easier if we agreed on something and then pitch it to some you know hey like the open ssf best practices working group uh, which does find it very interesting to identify best practices. Now they haven't promulgated things like that, but nothing says they can't. They just, you know, somebody needs to raise it as an issue. I, I mean, I like that. I think I, I would think that a, that is a better suited organization to come up with a statement like that versus chaos, where we're just that, that, we're just trying to measure stuff. But but the thing is, what I think this group should do. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm good with folks staying in lanes where they're the strongest at. I mean, that makes sense. But, you know, basically, you know, I don't think chaos doesn't need to, you know, create a spec or try to promulgate it, but it needs to identify the problem. So it maybe make suggestions and why, if it can, and then contact somebody else like the Open SSF work, Best Practices Working Group. I can do that. Okay. Yeah. But, um, you know, so, contact somebody else and say, hey, We've got a problem. If there was a best practice that people started following, it would be solved or made better anyway. So, but I think this group needs to try to identify why it's a problem and what to do about it. And then, you know, at least enough so that another group can, can finish, you know, enough so that the other group can finish the task in a way that will actually help here. Yeah. I mean, is it a... I gave myself to do to create an updated issue label list with mapping to the issues particular labels are mapped to the issues particular labels are used on. Sophie, I know you need to go, but there's yep. one issue I'd, I'd like to raise briefly. And, the, uh, you know, and that is the, what do we do about bugs that are still not handled, <laughs> especially those that have hung around say for years. Um, you know, I was thinking about maybe using median instead of average Maybe yeah. that helps a little bit. I think generally I, I don't want to use average on anything. Yeah. <laughs> I think because... median, there's the distribution can be misleading depending on like, so it could really skew averages if there has been a bug open for 10 years, like <laughs> your average is going to be something terrible. So I, I am on board with generally a median as a measure. Okay. As long as more than half of bugs are fixed, <laughs> then, uh, then it's okay. <laughs> All right. So then, so in addition to mapping the labels to specific bugs, have some sort of summary of um, the time to close for issues that have that bug related label. Yeah. I mean, um, I well, wait a minute. What's, is it, I, I thought we were essentially measuring time to close. Is that think, not what we're doing? Yeah. It is. I thought we were doing response rate versus time to close. So okay. like how long does it take for okay. someone to, okay. but it, it could be, it could be either. So I think that's, maybe that's our debate for next time. What is the actual better measure of? I think we have a already metric on the response time or something. We do? Like, yeah, for, uh, not in this working issue. group, but in other, yeah, issue response time in another working group. Yeah, because we've, def like, there is a metric that, that both Augur and Grimoire Lab implement for both time to first response and time to close on issues. Yeah. Okay, so, so we're talking, all right, first response time, and then there's other time to close. Right. And I guess they're both useful, but to be honest, time to close is the one that matters, right? For a it bug, yes. Yeah, I, 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 I can implement a, a little program to make my defect first response time under 30 seconds, right? Yes, you <laughs> can. <laughs> It'll be like, there's a bot, the moment issue is there, there's a response to it. That's right, there's a response. <laughs> I, my, my, my defect first response time is great. Time to so close, maybe, not so maybe, good. <laughs> maybe first response by a human rather than a bot. 
Yeah. Oh. I, I, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah I'm, I'm going to put that out. in by human. Uh, I, uh, good luck figuring that out. I don't even know how I would measure that. Uh, good for that later because I have been looking a lot at bots lately. Um, okay. I, I know you got to go. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I'll see yep. you after the break. Yeah. I'll see you from four weeks, I guess. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. See, see you all. Bye. Bye, Sophia. Okay. And I would guess we are we going to stop at this point? I think we could. Yeah, one? we could. I think yeah. we accomplished enough. And um, so I'll stop the share and I'll stop the recording. Uh,